This is a little lazier of a hack than I normally do because I'm doing a voiceover on pre-recorded video. Um, in this hack, I'm going to build a, a Coleco vision with a Raspberry Pi. I'm using Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm going to do what I always do, where I'm going to reuse the console, the plastic console, and add an Arduino for emulating a USB device for the controllers, for the joysticks. So I'm going to write some code, put it on the Arduino, and that will be published in GitHub if you check the, the description. So in this video here, I'll narrate uh, what I'm doing. So in this, right now, I am... Uh, I'm adding a case that I got from Amazon. It's a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 case. It has a fan on it, which is nice because the Raspberry Pi 4 does burn pretty hot. And it has a couple heat sinks. But I'm not going to use the bottom piece of the acrylic for the case because I'm going to leave the screw hanging off out a little bit further because it's going to go through the bottom of the Clico um, chassis, as you'll see later on in the video here. So just put these screws in here to hold it in place so I can figure out how to put the acrylic layers back together. You can see there, that's the bottom piece. It still has a sticker on it. And I'll dig that out of the garbage later because I accidentally throw it out. And you'll see how I, I'll use that to drill the holes as my template in the bottom of the case. I'm using a a micro HDMI to regular HDMI adapter, so I can plug it into a, a regular HDMI. In this controller, you can see that the top of the joystick is broken off, and it came like that from my, the eBay seller that I got it from. They didn't package it very well, so it broke it off. So I've, done, I've taken the, the joystick apart and just taken a look to see what pieces is, are damaged and how I can glue it back together. So you can see the little nub came off the end there. And that's where the screw goes into. So I'm gonna clean it off with some rubbing alcohol to get any of the grease or finger grease or the years of grime off of it because I'm gonna glue that together. I'm gonna to use um, some JB Weld. So I mix the JB Weld together. You got the hardener and the, the epoxy to so get a nice gray color. Really, I'm going to fill in the inside of this with the JB Weld. And the reason for that, you'll see in a second, is once I get the back piece on, um, I'm going to put a screw, a longer screw through it. So that longer screw will screw into the JB Weld that's inside of the joystick itself. That'll give it more support rather than that tiny little nub holding the whole joystick together. I'll use a clamp right here to clamp it together so that I can let it sit for a few hours. It's JB Weld Quick, I believe I'm using, so it only takes about two or two or three hours to, to dry so you can start using it. So with the magic of time travel and video, there it is, dried up and completed. So I'm just testing to make sure that the, uh, the JB Weld doesn't interfere with how the joystick bottom of the joystick mounts on that little rubber piece to make contact. Now here's the chassis itself. It had a few stickers falling off, so I wanted to clean those up with some rubbing alcohol. I'm going to put the stickers back on at the end using some contact cement. And take the screws out of the chassis. I did have some trouble trying to figure out how to take it off, but once I did, I got exposed the circuit board, which I don't need anymore. I no longer need the circuit board. So I'm going to remove the whole circuit board and just throw it onto my shelf of circuit boards from all the consoles that I've I've ripped apart. And yes, I get all of your, your emails about how bad of a person I am for um, taking apart these old video game consoles and removing their old internal guts and replacing them with Raspberry Pis. So here's the Raspberry Pi. I'm kind of trying to figure out where to put it because the top part of the Coleco, the top part of the, the console, I don't want it to uh, to rub against it or hit against it, right? So I'm kind of going to figure out where it's going to go and then also where am I going to run the cables? So I got the HDMI cable there and I also have uh, a power cable. It's just a, um, a USB-C power extension cable. And then I hook up a USB hub. I like these USB hubs or version 3s 
just be V3s um, from Amazon. They're, they're great hubs. They're really affordable as well. Again, trying to figure out where to put the Raspberry Pi, getting a good idea of where it needs to go and where all the wires would, would run from. I dig out the bottom of the acrylic uh, case for the Raspberry Pi from the garbage there you just saw, because I'm going to use that as the template of where I need to drill the screw holes. And there I go drilling the holes, and then I place a screw in the holes once I drill a hole so that it lines up the rest. And there's the holes that are done. And now I just take the nuts off the bottom of the, the bolts for the, uh, for, the, for the chassis there. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually flipping the bolt around so that the head of the bolt is gonna be under the console and then the nut's gonna go on top. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm flipping, flipping it around. And you'll see in a second that I'm going to be tightening those bolts. And you'll see that I'll be tightening with the head on the bottom. That way the, the nut doesn't stick out the bottom and I get the head on the top, uh, underneath. You see that? I don't tighten it too tight, of course. It's acrylic and, and plastic. So once I know where the power and the HDMI need to run, I've got to figure out how far away they have to be, kind of trying a few different things out here. Looks like I'm going to run them closer to the Pi than I thought. And it looks like I'm going to need to cut some holes in there. And to mount the plugs, I'm going to use this piece of 3D printed uh, bracket that I've had from a, a, a big servo. That I've had it sitting around for a long time. So rather than 3D printing and designing something new, I just happened to have had this sitting around. So I just cut it with the side cutters here until I got it to fit. And there you go. And then I'm just gonna see how they fit. Okay, um, with the magic of video again, it looks like I might have trimmed some of the plastic there, you can see. So I made it so the plugs, the HDMI and the power plug can plug in better. And then I'm gonna JB weld that bracket in place. So I clean it up with some rubbing alcohol first. And there you can see where I've, I've had to use a Dremel to cut those those holes a little bit bigger in the plastic for the, the plugs. And I'm JB welding that bracket in place. And JB Weld is great, especially if you want something permanent, unlike uh, hot glue, which will come off over time, as well as if you get it wet, rubbing alcohol will also take off uh, hot glue. So I use some brackets to hold it in place for the JB Weld to dry. Okay, now let's figure out how to mount the USB 3 hub. So I do want that little door in the front of the Clico console to open up to expose the USB hub. So I'm just gonna figure out now how it's gonna fit and if those little nubs are in the way. So I'm trimming everything down to get it to fit just right. And it looks like I grabbed another piece of that 3D printed bracket I had, another bracket, and I'm using that to, to uh, add additional support to the hub. So I can raise it, lower it, move it back, wherever it needs to, to fit so that it's in there. So I clean the plastic with rubbing alcohol again. That just helps promote the JB Weld to stick to it. Figure out exactly where it needs to go and trim it down. Mix up that JB Weld again. I probably could have benefited at this stage from to scratch up and scuff the plastic a little bit so we get some better adhesive, promote that stickiness a little better, but we're not being too hard on the unit. And I 
clamp that in place so it'll dry over overnight. I'll take a bit just to make sure that I get it lined up just perfect. So it looks good. Okay, now those plugs have been dried with the clamp and JB Weld. I'm just going to add some more JB Weld on top and the sides. Remember, we're going to be plugging HDMI cables and power cables into this thing. So we just want to make sure that these plugs are held in pretty, pretty good. Okay, so it's been a while, probably overnight in this case. Everything is dried up, good to go. Looks good. Now we're gonna start on the controllers. So I have these DB9 connectors. That's what are these joysticks, these uh, old Atari joystick type connectors use. And I'll use some pins because I'm going to uh, solder some wires to the DB9 connector directly to the connector and then I'm gonna plug them into the Arduino. The Arduino is going to emulate a USB device. And then I have these little brackets that I made on the 3D printer, which I riveted the DB9 connectors into because um, I need to screw the DB9 or glue the DB9 connectors to the chassis so that the controllers can plug into. So I riveted those connectors to that. To that plate. Rivets are great for this type of thing, especially little characters like this. see here where it's going to fit with the bracket. And now what I'm going to do is use those wires with the female connectors on the end and I'm going to solder those to the DB9 connector. And not every pin needs to be soldered, just the ones that we use for the joystick. And even though the DB9 connector is the same as an analog paddle from Atari or from a digital joystick from Atari, it's the same type of connector, um, they're not actually compatible on the Coleco. The Coleco number pad requires some strobing. So this is the Pro Micro. It's similar to the, um, I think it's the Arduino Leonardo as well. And they don't use a separate chip for USB, which means that you can actually emulate a USB device. So this is what I'm gonna hook the joystick, the paddles to, and then I'm gonna write some code on them and it's gonna emulate a joystick device. So I'm using the Atari um, joystick dry library that I wrote before, and I modified it to work with the Coleco. And in this case, I just test to make sure that the joystick works and then I have to figure out how to make the, the uh, keyboard or keypad mode work as well. Because the code, what it has to do is it has to strobe between the joystick and the, and the, uh, the keypad to figure out what's actually being touched. So is the keypad being touched or is a um, joystick being touched? So I have a keyboard mode and a uh, keypad mode, sorry, in the joystick mode. And I'm testing it to make sure that the joystick's working, it seems like it was. There we go. And I have to write some code to figure out if the keypad is being pressed. In this case, it looks like I called that function keyboard, but this is the matrix that I'm looking at here I found online. It's 
also in the GitHub repository for the source code that I published, if you want to take a look at that. So now I'm just experimenting with my code to see if the buttons are working. They should be emulating a keyboard device, and they are. There we go. And this is wiring the joystick, both joysticks, to the, to the Pro Micro. Now there's buttons on top for reset and power on the Coleco, and I'm gonna swap those buttons out with just regular push buttons so that I can access the menu in RetroPie. So one will be select and the other one will be the start button. I'm just making sure it fits okay. I'm just drilling into the regular button to make that fit. You can see here I've, I have glued the DB9 connectors to the bottom. I've glued the, with JB Weld, the, uh, the select and start buttons as well, and all the electronics are mounted in there. So all needs to be done now is put in a, the top on and close the little door, it hides the USB hub, and that's it, actually. And the next steps are just running RetroPie and putting the Coleco emulator on, filling it full of ROMs and playing some old BC Quest for tires.